Today's lesson is living and speaking for God, and this comes from Jeremiah chapter 7. The objectives for this lesson are that the kids would know that Jeremiah shared God's message of repentance with the people of Judah, that they would think about how Jesus paid the penalty for our sin, and that ultimately they would walk with God and faithfully share his message with others. And this, again, is that parent piece, kind of informing you of of where we are and what we're talking about. So, again, I'm going to read this to you, parents. Kids will probably check out on this, this part, but that's okay. So, we're in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was tasked with the important and difficult task of announcing God's judgment on his people. The Israelites were guilty of being unfaithful, following the sinful ways of surrounding nations, and worshiping false gods. Because they repeatedly chose unfaithfulness, they would have to face consequences that were far from God's best for them. While God instructed Jeremiah to announce his impending judgment, he also instructed him to remind the people that they could always return to God regardless of their sinfulness. God's message always leaves room for forgiveness. God loved his children, and he desired their return. We see this in Jeremiah 3.12. What a comfort that is for all all of us as well. Despite our sin and rebellion, God's love and care is still available to us. The disobedience and the numbing effects of sin hardened the people of Israel. Their hearts were so hardened that they didn't fear God or believe in him anymore. This explains the deep sadness of Jeremiah. It was as if his message was falling on deaf ears or being delivered to a brick wall. Jeremiah faced discouragement, but he did not give up. His example is a great encouragement to us. May we be encouraged and strengthened to continue to do the hard things that God asks of us. Hey guys, Linnea here. I'm back with our, to continue our story in Jeremiah. Today I have our helper, Gavin. Well, I think I have him, if he won't stop rolling. <laughs> Gavin. Last week, we began learning about the prophet Jeremiah. Remember me? I'm Jeremiah. God told Jeremiah to warn his people to turn from their sin and back to him. Hey, Jeremiah, tell the people to turn away from their sin and come back to me. Okay. Jeremiah was warning them of God's judgment on his people. God's going to judge you. Elsie, what does the word judgment mean? It means to be judged by someone or something and to be in the jealousy of other people and maybe the way you look. Think of judgment in terms of a judge's sentencing in a courtroom. When a person stands before a judge for a crime that he or she is found guilty of, (laughs) the judge... Me, I'm the judge, the ninja judge. ...will give the punishment, his or her judgment. I think you should go to jail for 14,000 years. The judge has full authority to decide what punishment is fitting for the crime that was committed. I get to do what I want because you stole all the candy. God is the judge. I'm the judge. God's people were guilty of being unfaithful to him. People are so guilty. They were worshiping false gods and following the sinful ways of the nations around them. They're doing such bad things. God told Jeremiah to go to the temple and give the people his message. Jeremiah, give the people this message. Okay. Jeremiah told the people that God said for them to change their ways. Change your ways. If they did so, God would allow them to stay in the land. If you do, you'll live in the land forever. If they did not, there would be consequences. Ooh, you're going to get in trouble. No, I'm not. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to break in. God, what God? There's no God. I can do what I want because there's no God. I'm a God. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're yes, not. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No! Oh, my hair. Through Jeremiah, God clearly announced to his people that a punishment was coming because they would not turn away from their sin and choose to follow him. But let's look at something else God told the people. Jeremiah 3, 12 through 13 says, Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will not look on 
on you in anger, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt and that you rebelled against the Lord your God and scattered your favors among foreigners under every green tree and that you may not have obeyed my voice, declares the Lord. There was a battle going on inside the people of Judah. Who would the people love? Would they love and do what God told them? Or would they do what they wanted and go their own way? All the people had to do was to make the choice to turn away from their sin and turn back to God. He would forgive them. He wanted all the people's heart, not just part of it. And the same is true of you and me. Throughout God's word in both the Old and New Testaments, God is identified as a judge. But God's no ordinary judge. Scripture tells us he's a perfect, righteous judge. Deuteronomy 32, 4. He comes to judge the earth with his righteousness and faithfulness. Psalm 96, 13, Jeremiah eleven twenty. He judges by truth. Romans 2, 2. This means all the decisions God makes are excellent and right. Romans 3.23 tells us every person has sinned. Mm -hmm. And Romans 6.23 tells us the sentence for sin is death. But God offers us something else. Hey, Colin, can you read Romans 3.24 and answer a couple of questions for us? And are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. All right, bud. What does this verse tell us God gives us? Gives us grace. Mm -hmm. How does God, our judge, do this? Um, redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Okay, kids, time to grab your field notes. If you haven't printed those out yet, put this on pause and ask mom and dad to make a copy for you. Okay. Jeremiah faithfully shared God's message to the people, and he warned them to do what is right and to live holy lives. We are to faithfully share God's message of grace and forgiveness with those around us. And we can do that just using our hand and remembering five truths. Put up your first finger, because one is, I am forgiven because of Jesus. Two, I am guided by God's word. Three, I am created for a special purpose. Four, I am loved and accepted by God. Five, I am strong by God's help. And I'm part of his plan, and I'm in his hands. Let's review our application verse. And you'll see some blanks up here in the corner of your field notes to, to fill in. Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. God called the prophet Jeremiah to deliver a specific message to the people of his day. There are two ways every person needs to respond to God's message of the gospel, to receive it and to speak it. We are to humbly receive the message of the gospel. That means we understand we are as guilty as the people of Judah were when they sinned against God. Because sin requires a penalty, God gave his son to make us right with him. But we must make the choice to admit and confess our sin and accept the free gift of salvation. We are also to faithfully speak the message of the gospel. But how do we do that? As our relationship with Jesus grows, we choose to be obedient to God's word, and we become a walking testimony of the gospel. Others see Jesus in us as we reflect God's truths through our words and actions. We share with others how Jesus has changed our lives. Have you personally heard with your ears and responded with your heart to the gospel message? If not, I want to invite you to do that today. Maybe ask your mom and dad what that means. But if you've already responded to the gospel message, is there someone God wants you to share the message with? Okay, guys, your next step is to walk with God and faithfully share his message with others. We'll see you next time.